Today, I want to share with you about MS, amnesia. That's right. I had it. Sometimes it's known as transient global amnesia. It was a crazy thing. It's the first time in over 12 years that I have been living with MS that I've experienced amnesia. As a result of the MS, I'm going to tell you this story today, what happened and how I dealt with it. But before I do, I'm Jenda Tracy. I'm the founder of Women Thriving with MS. You are at the Women Thriving with MS channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can get more information about my journey about MS and see how that resonates with you. All right, let's talk about amnesia and MS. Honestly, I didn't know that there was anything called transient global amnesia before this situation happened to me. It's only happened once in my life and it was very recently. And there was a, uh, like a cause as to why it happened. So let me start from the beginning of the story and tell you. It's very interesting. Like I, I, when I look back at it, it's amnesia, as you may know, is that your, your brain in a sense goes offline. You can't remember things present and past, <laughs> which is very strange because after I got through this episode of amnesia for MS, I wouldn't have remembered it if somebody hadn't told me. <laughs> I relied on other people to tell me what happened. So back in this, the fall, I went to a cottage with a bunch of people from my supper club. I belonged to this Anglican supper club. The leader, Leanne, wanted to host an event, a retreat, and I was so excited to get away and do this. And there was a very small group of us there. There was just eight of us, so a very small, close-knit group. And one of the people in that group who was one of my bunkmates told me that he wanted to go and jump in the lake. And I thought, fantastic. Yes, it's November. <laughs> yes, it's Canada. <laughs> yes, it's up in the mountains. But <laughs> I can do this. I even brought my swimsuit. I went down to the dock with my friend we did not dip our toe in the water. We made a pack. We would count to three and we would jump in. Now I noticed with this dock that, there were, that they had removed the ladder because it was the end of the season for swimming. And so there we went. We went one, two, three. We jumped in. I screamed before I even jumped in in anticipation of how cold it was. And when I like dropped into the water. It was so cold, so incredibly cold. You're thinking like, that's crazy. I mean, people in Europe do this all the time. It's not like a big deal. People do polar bear swims, but here I was. And then I realized that because there was no ladder, I had to swim around to the side of the, the base of the dock to where the walkway was and climb out. So that was a little bit tricky because number one, I was cold. And secondly, I was climbing up over the rocks to get onto that walkway of the dock, but I did. And when I got out, my skin was very happy to be in this somewhat balmy day environment. It was about, I think, 14 degrees Celsius, which for that time of year in November, is pretty warm. And so I was like, okay, great. I'm out. I'm grabbing my towel. I'm feeling okay. But my skin was burning and I felt very cold. And as we embarked upon our path up back to the cottage, we walked by the hot tub. And I had said to myself, I am before this incident of feeling really cold, I'm not going in the hot tub. I know I can overheat. I know that that can be very uncomfortable for me, so I'm not going to do it. But of course, I brought my swimsuit anyway <laughs> when I packed my stuff. And as we embarked up that pathway to the hot tub, I saw there was already one person in there and I knew that the other two people I was with were going in too. So I climbed into the hot tub next to 
this other woman and there was enough room for all four of us in there and it felt so good. I was like, oh, this is so amazing. And we were talking about the crock pot and how a crock pot works because Liam was making this meal for us for dinner and hadn't used a crock pot before. And then all of a sudden, this is where the story changes. This is where I don't remember. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what others that were in the hot tub and came down to the hot tub during that time told me. All of a sudden, I turned to Leanne, who was sitting close by and looked at her, and I said, something's not right. And her response was, well, we turned off the bubbles. And I'm like, no, no, something's not right. Something's not right. How did I get here? And I'm looking around, looking around, like, how did I get here? Where am I? How did I get here? And her response was, you drove. And I, I drove? Yeah, you drove. I drove? I drove here? Yeah, you drove here. Oh. And you drove so-and-so and so-and-so. You drove these two people here. I'm like, oh, really? And then I sat there. And maybe a minute or two later, I said, something's not right. And I said, how did I get here? And she responded again, you drove, I drove. And this was the loop I was in. This was the amnesia loop, the transient global amnesia. This went on and on and on for five, 10 minutes. Same questions, pausing. I did not have my agency. I did not have my autonomy. My brain did not have the capacity to be online to tell me, get out of the hot tub. You are overheated. Fortunately, Anne said, okay, everybody, we're going to get out of the hot tub now. So we all got out of the hot tub. Somebody helped me out. I went through the door and then I walked took off my shoes that I don't remember, my flip-flops, and headed to the bedroom where I was staying. And at that point, I said to the person that I had been swimming with, oh, you can change in here, I'll go into the bathroom. So I was able to say that. And then I guess I was in the bathroom for quite a while, drying off and putting on my clothes. And when I came back, that's when Leanne told me what had happened. I would not have remembered anything. I would have just gone and had my nap. In fact, I realized I was hungry. I did recognize I was hungry. So I went upstairs. I had some rice cakes with some almond butter. Then I came back down. Then I had my nap. And when I woke up, I went upstairs. I joined everybody at the table. And this is when people said that they noticed that my eyes were red and I was kind of out of it. And I know we were doing a round around the table, a check-in on a certain theme. And I was thinking about what am I going to say? And I, I recall saying something because now I'm starting to remember things, not remembering what happened in the hot tub. I had no clue about that if, if I hadn't been told. And then I went downstairs a couple times and came back up. And even over dinner, I was told that I had difficulty forking my <laughs> food, <laughs> putting, putting food on my fork to eat it. Over that night, I felt fine. The only thing that really stood out most for me is I felt very emotional, weepy, kind of off in that way, like sad. And I didn't really understand that. I attributed it to the fact that I had experienced amnesia based on what others were saying. And it was later that I looked up amnesia and MS and I saw transient global amnesia and read a little bit about it. There's not actually a lot of information, but here's what I deduct. And you probably guessed this already is that I went from an environment of extreme cold, instant cold in my body, whereby the contraction of my blood vessels constricted. And then I went into a very warm, almost hot circumstance where my blood vessels expanded very quickly. And this is what triggered the amnesia. And because I wasn't able to function, like my brain functioning was not at the level where I could make decisions, 
I had no message in my brain saying, get out of the hot tub. Most of the time, when I get into a hot tub, I sit on the edge, then I go in for maybe five minutes, three, four, five minutes, and then I get out and I sit on the edge again, and that's all I can do. Here I was climbing into the hot tub, <laughs> my blood vessels expanding, my brain shutting off so I didn't know to get out. And thankfully, thankfully Leanne said, hey everybody, it's time to get out of the hot tub. That memory will never be present in my brain because it was amnesia. If no one had told me, then I would have just carried on with my life. I probably would have felt a little bit out of it, not understood why. And then eventually I would have just carried on. So I'm grateful that my brain went back online over a period of probably, I don't know, five hours completely. Uh, that was the good news. And I was still able to participate in an art project that we were doing at the table and having some conversation, but to be fully back took some time. And of course, my sweetie was very freaked out about it <laughs> when I called to say what had happened. And I asked them, Question, the same question over and over again. Oh, where are you? <laughs> After being told that three times. So clearly my brain wasn't fully back online during that telephone conversation, but later I was in much better shape. So there you go. So I don't recommend going from extreme cold to extreme hot. Not a good idea. Supposedly if you go from hot to cold, that's a lot better. And I certainly didn't have a hot shower after I got out of the hot tub. I just changed into my clothes. I spent a good part of that rest of that afternoon, evening between socializing and resting, that balance. So my brain is back online. I'm good. But if you ever have something like this happen, know what it is and what the possibility is. And I'm sure there's other reasons why people experience this type of amnesia for MS. And that's my story. As my friend Lori would say, I'm sticking to it. I'm glad that you had a chance to watch this video. I'm Jen Tracy, and I'm certainly happy to be sharing this story with you. Thank goodness it's over, that event. If you haven't already, like, comment, share this video, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye now.